Hi everybody, thank you for uh, for indulging us as we took our quick little break after that big epic fight. Um, our group began tonight's session by basically beating up Nightfire and the Factor 3 and Dr. Azoth and his homunculi. Um, it was a lot simpler for the characters than I thought it was going to be, so we'll know in the future. Status uh, effects for the win. Huh. Debuffs, debuffs for days. Um, but yeah, our group has defeated them. They have also handed over several of the supervillains to the enigmatic figure known as Warden. And, uh, yeah, that's sort of where we're picking up uh, in the caldera of the volcano. Take it away. Well, we've got the rest of the bloodstones, right? Yep, oh, you yeah. have all five of them. Well, let's I get the two uh, I have over to Resonant and just sort of surreptitious glances around the group like somebody want to tell me what's going on around here like okay so I'm out of time a little bit but some weird stuff happening uh, I think we should go home we can talk about it there yeah okay. we've got we've got to take these we've got to take these back to the Nexus and one of these has to go back to Subterra No, we, we can't bring it back to Subterra. They they lost it already. At least the Nexus, we have a better sense that they can keep it secure. There was a reason Eldritch put it back in Subterra when he when he did this last time. Resonant, we're not giving it back. Whatever reason he had, things must have changed since then. Guys, we have to take it back. And she's like saying this through gritted teeth. No, we don't. What's wrong with you? What's your reasoning? I have to take it back. Is something wrong with her? A single bloodstone is not that terribly useful. Is it? Is that a threat if one of them is out? I'd rather not take that risk. I just feel like Resonant shouldn't be saying this. Is this not Resonant? No, I'm scared. <laughs> Can I roll yeah. an inside check to see what's going on? Yeah, go ahead. Ooh. Yeah, 18. Uh, it does seem out of character for Resonant, but you're not 100% sure why she's making this request. Can I attempt an inside check? Yeah, for sure. Skills. Probably not going to be much better. It's going to be much worse. <laughs> I don't understand people. <laughs> um, Bowman, you're not 100% sure, but you're you're wondering if Resonant has looked in a mirror shard. And you weren't paying attention. Yeah. You didn't touch one of those mirrors, did you? No. Then why? Does the Gaius make me not reveal that I'm under it? No, no. As far as you know, you have to give it back because you gave your word to the king of Subterra. I have to stick to my word. I gave the King of Agartha my word that it would go back. Well, why did you do that? Because I'm a hero? At this point, reasoning. Mortis is the only one who's acting like himself, so Overdrive is kind of watching Mortis's reaction to all this. See what's <laughs> Resonant, do you have to take it back or does it have to go back? I have to take it back. Why don't you give them to me? I just need the one. That's Why all that has to be. Why don't you give them all to me? Can and we I'll leave take the, care of them. Can we leave the caldera before we do anything? I'd like to go back to the Nexus and give the rest of them to Sala before we do anything else. Yeah, why don't we give them all to Sala? But you have the alternative atlas. Can you take us to, to back yeah. to the Nexus? Yeah, well, that's not a problem. Good. While we're there, maybe Sala can help them secure it a bit better. 
I'm not against the idea of not having them all in one place. I just don't want to put them back in the place they got stolen from. Agreed. Well, let's go back to the Nexus. Excellent. So the gang loads up the Atlas and you put Bebop back over to the Nerian Nexus. You find yourself back in that magical brownstone. Do we just like drop the civilians in prison along the way? <laughs> These are for you, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Drive by prisoning. <laughs> it's super illegal. <laughs> um, you have to prison them in Germany because it's illegal to be a Nazi there and not in America. <laughs> yeah. Ah. <laughs> Beautiful. So yeah, so you, um, you appear back at the Nexus after dropping off your prisoners. Uh, Sala will take as many blood stems as you want to give to him. All of them. Do I realize that Resident is under a gay ass? Uh, give me an expertise magic check. Can I aid myself with a cult? <laughs> 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 Uh, I got a twenty-eight on my expertise magic check. Yeah, you are you are definitely picking up some magical energy from Resonant that appears to come from the Terra King, and you identify that as a chaos spell. So when we get back to the Nexus, I'm going to pull Sola aside and say, "I believe Resonant is under chaos. No way that we can break that. Is that is there?" Oh, we could try, but there's no, no saying what might happen if the chaos gets broken. That's powerful magic. Could result in some damage to her. That's what I thought. Um, what is the chaos for? Looking at the stones in his hand. One of those. I wonder if that's why Adrian gave one back to the Terra King. I don't know what harm it could do if only one of them is out there in the world, though. Do you have any sorts of um, binding circles or something else that we can, we can give along with it to make it easier to secure? Because I think he only wants it for status reasons. Yeah, that's reasonable. It also was technically his, and he's very, uh, very possessive. As an individual. Well, I mean, um, I'm sure that's why one of the reasons he is so possessed because it is a status symbol. Yeah, we could put some uh, we could put some protective wards on it and see if that'll help keep it safe. And uh, Sala will take it and he'll go uh, he'll go start doing that. I'll slide back to the root. Sala's so doing a little prep work on the the stone before we take it back. Should help him. Should help him uh, uh, keep it um, secure. And the rest of them will do the same thing too, and find somewhere here in the nexus to keep them. At least for right now. We can also let loose the we'll let rumors go in the underworld that uh, they were destroyed or depowered. Any... Depowered is probably a better way to do that. Okay, so as long as we get to take it back, I just I'm trying to uphold my word. No, I get it. Well, I can live with that for now, though we might have a need of it again if it's something that can help Seven break out of Luna's control later, unless we find another way to do that. Well, I would hopefully find it. We'd find hopefully a better way to do it because using bloodstones for that is really dangerous. Risk. Risky yeah, at best. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather not pour a bunch of dark magic into Seven when she's already wrestling with another set of dark magic. Yeah, magic is certainly a complex thing. But speaking of, I suppose while we're here waiting, we should deal with everything, or at least between us right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so where do you guys want to start? 
Freedom League Dark? How about we start <laughs> there? What does that even mean? We didn't come up with the name. Nope. The media has so, nicknamed us uh, our specific subset of Freedom League as uh, Freedom League Dark. And they just drew that name out of a hat? Or is this well, I'm, I'm sure Bowman's shiny, vibrant, colorful Color voice <laughs> and, and, and me being on the team didn't help with that at all. Are you asking if we've killed someone, Dave? I don't know what I'm asking. I... I mean, I, I, I don't, I, I don't get, okay, Mortis, it makes sense for you. Like you're the, you're the living dead guy. Like, but, but, but Fletch and, and Kate, like, I, I know you've been through some stuff, but I don't know. Like, I feel like I don't know what's going on here. Uh, so let me delve in to me a little bit. I'm not exactly the Kate that you remember. Um, neither of us belong in this timeline. We were both transported here from a different timeline, so we think. Um, and in my timeline, which I am sort of hoping is also your timeline, uh, everyone died, including you, including these heroes around us, everyone died and I was the only one surviving and I spent 10 years by myself. So two months ago, I was transported here um, because apparently this timeline Centurion used a mirror shard, which is the same thing that your, that this timeline's overdrive did. And I have been adjusting to it, I guess. But everything is a little bit different here, and we weren't together here. And honestly, I, I don't really know what else to say. I'm glad that you're here, but it's a little bittersweet because where is the other overdrive? Oh. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know if this makes any sense, Kate. But like, I I feel like we we bumped into multiversal counterparts before. Like, I, I don't know. Like, other than the hair and the tattoo, like it feels like it's really you. So, but if you and I are from a different timeline, why then is Fletch this dark archer? Like, this isn't Force Ops. Like. He's, like, what is going on with the people who are from this timeline? I'm just exactly what I need to be. I'm not sure what your Fletch was like, but he isn't me. Yeah. I guess there are just things have happened a little differently in this timeline. There's no Brutus in this timeline. At least I haven't found him yet. He killed our dog? I don't know if he's dead but he's not around. I've looked for him. Um, but everybody's been through a little bit of a different thing in this timeline and it's just a lot to adjust to, I know that, but I feel that we should probably try to help find the people that belong here. Right. But I, I, I don't know, like that whole, I, I guess I was living too much in the past or the future or whatever, like what I could hear over the comms, like what was going on in that fight after you had me leave? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> I have, after being alone for 10 years, I have become very protective over the people that I love and I have become a little bit rougher, I guess you could say in my ways. Okay. So I'm not the Centuria that you remember. I've changed a lot. And 
Anybody else want to talk to him? <laughs> I mean, Dave, none of us are probably exactly who we were with what's jumbled up in your head right now. We're, we haven't gone dark. You know, that's not anything that any of us have ever, well, not any of us, sorry, Mortis. <laughs> but it's, we're, we're being better than we were, I mean, after I guess seven. that's what's confusing to me because if I'm from the future, then I don't understand why I don't remember this. What is the last thing you remember? I know you said that's, it was. I know you said it was hazy last that's time. That's just really jumbled up. I mean, we were we were fighting, but like we were, I don't know, like we were like a like a well-oiled machine. I wasn't. I don't know. There wasn't any of this doubt and hesitation. Like I, do, do you remember what happened to Seven? Yeah. What happened to Seven? Uh, I mean, she became the Master Mage for a little bit, and and, and then she... Yeah, I don't remember what happened to her. Just remember, she became the master mage, and then, and then I'm pulling the blank. Hmm. That might be the point where our timelines diverge, or at least significantly. Okay. You said we were fighting, like the group of us. Yeah, not each other. We were. As a team. As a team, yeah. Against who? Very powerful, very evil. Something magic. Maybe. That part's a little hazy still. Okay. Um, when we got done with Una. It cost us seven. We lost her. And I lost my anchor. I lost my drive and I left. Just a couple of years after we lost seven. The whole team kind of split apart for a bit. Actually, it's only in the last two months that we've really gotten back together. We we're, we were all drawn to the Nexus because of Seven. We had to, from there, it was helping Centuria dealing with what happened to the Freedom League and Omega and all of uh, Tarvon the Undying, all of that stuff with Una's dimension in the Terminus. And then coming back here to deal with the Bloodstones. It's, it's been kind of a crazy two months. Maybe that explains the weird dissonance I feel with the rest of you, but, but Kate, that's, I mean, other than these changes you've been through, like, I, I don't know, I, I, I mean, I've spent I, I, the I, past I, two months with an overdrive who doesn't love me, so I've sort of gotten used to the, the idea that you and I aren't together anymore, and then you come and and it's a wonderful, but I'm I'm afraid that it's not going to last. So I'm trying to protect my heart so that if I lose you again, it doesn't destroy me. I've already lost you twice in two completely different ways. He'll sort of take Centuria's hand, like, look, I, I, I can't explain exactly what's going on, but we are from the same place. We, we, I don't know what happened to you that, that led you to the things that you've been through, but I'm not going anywhere. We're, we're, we're going to get through this. Her eyes water a little bit and she just nods. Okay. 
there is still the matter of the fact that this universe's overdrive had a life of his own. Yes, we don't know where he is. And I okay. do not want to be the one to tell Tracy that we don't know where he is. Tracy, oh, oh, Tracy is this universe's overdrive's yeah. girlfriend. Okay. Which has been really fun. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I've walked into act three of a play. I missed the first two parts. So oh, I think that we should probably keep you away from Tracy for the time being. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I, we need to find overdrive and we probably, I feel very selfish that I haven't thought about it up to this point, but I feel that we need to find Centuria. They belong here. Mortis, do you have the mirror shard that you got back at your house? Or do. do you want to bring it back to the Nexus? Um, maybe Sala and I and you, maybe we can, you know, figure something out with relating to that Centuria. Maybe we can figure out where they, where they point to. Yeah, I can, I can, I can go get it. It's not a problem. Well, let's. We've just kind of whirlwinded the last few days. Let's let's take a little, if we can, at the very least, let's take a little bit of downtime. It's it's this is a lot to take in for everybody. And just I just feel like we probably need a little bit of a a breather. Yeah, I mean, not like the villains in the city generally let anybody breathe but i feel like i feel like we need it just to kind of wind down there's we still have to figure out a way to get seven away from una who knows what else is coming on coming at us from that i still have to get home i have to deal with my uncle i have to rescue my mom man Hmm. Yeah, I think home right now, at least home in Freedom City is the best place to go right now. There's a reason your Fletch is dead. I just saw that comment, and that's <laughs> dark. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm just spectating. You guys are doing good. <laughs> wow. Um, Resident's gonna come over and uh, give you a hug, overdrive. Okay. It's gonna be okay. Oh no, we'll we lost this... Calvin. Oh no. You know, I thought he was frozen, but I, I, I was like not sure if he was just being real stoic. <laughs> we lost him, and more pictures are jumbled up. Yeah, I'll keep an eye out for Calvin when he comes back. They'll go back where they're supposed to go. Mm-hmm. I think um, maybe, Kev, you should just scoot over a little bit, and then Jonesy should scoot over a little bit, and then you guys can both be win with dice. <laughs> <laughs> is, this, is this working? Yeah. Uh, Almost. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so Resident will give, will give you that hug overdrive and basically say we'll we'll get this figured out and, you know <laughs> if, if you need to... I'm sorry you're having a dramatic moment I'm being that guy uh, <laughs> if you need if you need somebody to talk to you know my door's open okay yeah maybe, maybe... Maybe when there's time, that's a good idea. I might be able to... Maybe I can do something to help you unlock what's bottled up in here. And she's going to tap your forehead. The sessions are nice. Almost, Alex. Didn't quite come back. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, I'm fixing it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. No worries. I'm happy. Hmm. Um, do, 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 do. I want to pull Resident aside for a moment. Um, 
we probably need to focus on finding overdrive. Okay. And I only say that because this one's not supposed to be here. Well, neither Centuria. And this one's not supposed to be in the lands of the living. Oh. I wish I had super hearing. <laughs> Which is why I waited till now to say it when I could pull, <laughs> pull her aside. I did not want to say that anywhere oh, no. that Overdrive could hear me. Actually, Overdrive, <laughs> will you make a, a D20 no. plus? No! <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> the evil GM raised his head. I gotta look it up. Sorry, one second. A perception? No, no, just a D20 plus. Yes. Uh, plus, 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 plus. Uh, yes. Plus 10. Twenty plus ten. Rolling for Davy. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Oh, oh sure. I want you to roll well. Yeah, overdrive. You um. You start to smell something that seems shadowy from the direction Mortis and Resident just went off into. No, what's good? It smells it. like uh, smells like scheming to you. Just so it doesn't it smell, smell like, like maple syrup on sandpaper. I'll <laughs> 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 be okay. That's exactly what scheming sounds like. It smells like <laughs> oath. Somehow. <laughs> I've got to go buy some sandpaper tomorrow. I'm going to put it up on the microphone and I'm just going to ASMR it, see what it smells like, sounds like. <laughs> USP, now with smell of vision <laughs> uh, Alright, I'm going to kind of squint off in that direction, but this is something maybe to discuss. So, what are you telling me? I mean, I, I know what you're telling me, but what does it mean? I don't know. I don't know if that means he's, he's in the underworld somewhere. If, if so, which underworld? Is he stuck in the velocity of speed? Or the wellspring of speed? I don't know. I, okay. I don't know, but... Well, then we definitely need to bring our mirror shards back here and what? and do, do what we what? can to... Well, you know, I'm worried about Centuria, but Centuria is also, well, capable of handling yourself, and... If they swap places, the other Centuria was around, surviving, living, not sort right. of thriving, but like, you know. If it's not that case for Dave. Okay, I get it. Okay, yeah. You need to make that priority number one then. I mean, I can go get my shard. Yeah, I guess we'll make, we'll, uh, we'll need to do that sooner than I thought. I mean, the others can at least take some downtime. Okay. Oh, by the way, I th you did a really good job back there at the caldera, keeping your emotions in check. Uh, I, 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 I know how hard that was for you. Luckily, the others got to him before I did, so they kind of spared me that. But I, I saw what his his work did firsthand. And she's just, she's just gonna pull you in for a hug. <laughs> it's okay. You don't have to tell me. I get it. You take some time too. Go, go be with Nick, and bring the shard back tomorrow. It can wait at least a day, or at least twelve hours, right? Hmm. I'll, I'll check. But yeah. Okay. Okay, so we'll head back to the rest of the group. So, 
So, Centuria, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at those shards and see if we can't figure out what's going on. Okay. She'll sort of like grab onto overdrive pan. She's like ninety percent sure that this is gonna end with him going back to wherever he was from and her losing him again. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Ed is super happy about this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is how I camouflage my pain. <laughs> and who's going to talk to Tracy? Or are we assuming we can figure this out within a reasonable amount of time? I have no idea that we can figure this out in a reasonable amount of time. I, I don't... will ask Nick to talk to Tracy. Probably a good idea. And just, you know, tell her that we're on a mission, for, for, you know, and that I was able to communicate with Nick because of our connection, because while well, weirdness, it's an easy buy. Um, Don't no, really. we just can't be photographed by the paparazzi. <laughs> Gonna need a place to hole up then. Well, Freedom City is always available. Yeah, yeah the hall yeah. has room. So. Well, we can get you guys over. We can head over there and get everything set up, I suppose. Um, and then, Mortis, you and I can get our shards and bring them back here. Be careful handling that. I'm not touch. I'm not. I'm not touching that thing without something on top. Uh, something covering it. Just put it in a in a bag. Yeah, don't look at it directly, I... <laughs> or think too hard, or however magic works. <laughs> Jokes on you, Sam. Already looked at it. Good luck, Caroline. Um. <sighs> Awesome. So it sounds like the plan is for Centurion Overdrive and Bowman to go back to Freedom Hall, Mortis to go home, Resonant to go home. Does that sound right? The idea for right now, I think, is um, Mortis. You have you have a teleport ability, right? I do. So, I think the plan for now is to all every one of us teleport to Freedom Hall, so that the three of them can figure out what's going on, then teleport back to my place, get my shard, teleport to Mortis's place, get his shard, and then come back to the Nexus. Excellent. And then once once they're here, we can, uh, like, Sala and I can start if Mortis wants to go hang out with Nick, like I suggested. Does Tracy know Bowman's secret identity? I doubt it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Because he needs to go on his date. Yes. I, I think Tracy knows. Obviously, she knows. Um, Overdrive secret identity. I, I, I'm assuming she knows Mortis's secret identity, because it's not that secret. Right. <laughs> and and yeah. isn't try very hard to to make it a secret. Um. I don't know because Resident wasn't. She well, only had those. When they first started dating. She only had a couple of years where she was a hero, and she wasn't. Yeah. Um, she was a lot different back then than she is now. So I don't necessarily know that the two get tied in together, but it also depends on how much Dave told her about his previous doings. Before time. The before time. Me too. Tracy knows Bowman's identity because she has lunch with Sophie every now and then. Right. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> so that so, means. so it's so it's the Catwoman Talia dynamic. Is that what's going on oh. here? Oh no. <laughs> That's the trick. Tracy's actually going to leave Overdrive for Bowman. Oh, oh no. boy. So confused. That's it's too bad. many. I know. It's a so, love yeah, Pentagon. So... <laughs> I, I thought she was going to leave uh, Overdrive. Sophie, but okay. Oh. <laughs> Both. So I guess, yeah, I guess that's the plan. And then if Sala has the bindings complete on the Bloodstone, then taking it back to 
uh, the Terra King. Excellent. Um, Solo will bring out the um, modified Bloodstone and hand it over to you, Resonant, to take off when you're ready to take it off. Can um, Do you know a way I can teleport out of there without wearing this stupid tabard that she's, she pulls out? Because that's what got everything... That's, that, that was how we said everything could be handled, because everything down there is wonky. The Alternative Atlas doesn't even work well down there. It must mm. have pulled us exactly where we needed to be. Which, it's not supposed to do that. It's supposed to go where I tell it to, right? Right. right. I'm sure if we get far enough away from the, temp well, the main compound that it would work. Either yeah. that or my ability to go into the, the crossroads would work. Okay. It just um, might, we might have to spend like 20 minutes hiking across the city or something. Solo will, um, Solo will review the tabard and sort of pull a spell out of it and cast it on you so you're able to teleport in and out as you need to. Cool. Oh, that works. Magic. That works. <laughs> Magic. Cool. So we'll pop the uh, bloodstone back to the Terra King. I'll give him back the tabard. Um, perfect. Yeah, he um, he kind of sits up from his throne and he says, yes, excellent. Thank you for bringing that back. I gave you my word. Yes. We've got some extra bindings on it, so this time, don't lose it. Uh, is it safe to touch? Yes. It should be. Good. And he sort of stands up, hovels over his little staff, he'll take it with his little wretched claw. Go back to the throne and sit it on the armrest next to him. Okay. I will delay your execution until a later time. Gracious of you. Tell Daedalus I'm coming for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He will be punished for his hubris. Get him, lying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you and every other supervillain in this city. Gone. Blip. <laughs> boring. It's a boring conversation anyway. <laughs> <sighs> and then to Freedom Hall with the the three of them. Awesome. So are you just dropping them off and then you guys are heading back to the Nuri Nexus to look at the mirror shards? Um that's my plan, okay. yep. but I don't. But I don't know if anybody else has any other thing they want to do while we're here. Um, I'll help out getting Nuver Drive settled in. Yeah. Nuver Drive. <laughs> wow. Um, if I can help out in any way, I'll do that and then head back to my own secret layer. Awesome. So you all appear in the lobby of Freedom Hall, and Cynthia looks up. She says, welcome back. Did you enjoy the packed lunch for your adventure earlier? Yes. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, this overdrive appears to be from a separate timeline. And you can see good. you can see chronal shifts. Daedalus has outfitted me with many top of the line sensors. Well, this overdrive is going to be staying here for now. That's okay. Is this supposed to be a secret? Yes. Yes. Then I will maintain the secrecy needed for his travels in and out. Please step forward, Overdrive. Uh, sure, Cynthia. And uh, she puts a bracelet on you. Okay. This emits an electromagnetic pulse that fries cameras within 120 feet of you. Should you need to avoid? Me. Should you need to avoid paparazzi? Uh, that seems a little over the top, don't you think? That's why I wear a mask. Is Overdrive's identity public in this universe? No, but we don't want you getting mixed up with him. She she pats you on the shoulder with her little robotic <laughs> hand and she says, "Oh, sweetie, you think people can't tell who you are when they can't see your cheekbones?" <laughs> That's what I was hoping. 
your hair is out. I know, like you have bright red hair. <laughs> but it's windblown. I mean, that's gonna count for something, right? Oh. I would laugh if I was programmed to do so. Oh. <laughs> So he's programmed you to do all these other things? Hey, and all, you, all you haters out there talk about Superman and the glasses. They work. <laughs> when I first got glasses, my niece worked at Dairy Queen, and I went in and ordered ice cream, and she didn't recognize me with glasses on. She said, there. <laughs> it was a good eight seconds of, oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so they work just fine. So all you Superman haters can shut it. Well, maybe you should put on a pair of glasses then, Dave. Okay. Hey, that was out of character. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, to think that that was in character. <laughs> Miss Kate, would you like for him to stay with you, or do you want me to prepare a separate room? Uh, that's, that's up to him. Go kind of look at Kate and sort of... Uh... She'll give him, like, a little smile. If you're, if you're okay with that, Kate, uh, I mean, we've lost some time. I'd like to make up for that if we can. Uh, uh, yeah. Be pushy. Yeah, he can He can stay in my I will prepare the sound dampeners. Oh my god. <laughs> exactly what does this robot do? I don't remember <laughs> Cynthia in my timeline. <laughs> This worldly. <laughs> I am a concierge robot. It is my job to facilitate your good times. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh yeah, this is definitely a different timeline. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, can you Import just get him some like extra clothes and put them up there? And things that he might need. Body wash. She reaches into her little chest compartment and hands you a toothbrush. Yeah. That's, good. That's, that's, that's good. Thank you. I will send some more Cynthia's around to prepare everything he needs. There's more of them? I have this 547 sisters. This is definitely a different timeline. <laughs> wow. That's a big family. Daedalus um, is yes, all of our fathers. <laughs> that would be fun. Oh He's our daddy too, man. <laughs> Happy Father's Day, Daedalus. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> okay, that'll be that'll be great. Um, Bowman, I don't think we need any more help. If you want to go and do your thing, I do have other things to take care of. Yeah, I figured you're a very busy man. What? Well, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll leave you two to get reacquainted. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and go to your secret hideout. Cynthia will no. hand you a toothbrush, too. <laughs> Thank you, Cynthia. <laughs> Slip it into the utility belt. Never know when a toothbrush arrow is going to come in handy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when that tooth monster shows up. <laughs> Brush him. Uh, <laughs> you start brushing him, he starts kicking like a dog. <laughs> um, just being utterly confused at Centuria's reaction, he will summon the bow cycle, which I hope is in working order. It is in working order. You get a positive green light, and it says it is on its way. Good job, kid. He will say under his breath. <laughs> Did I hear that? Can I roll to hear that? Yeah, you can roll to hear it if you want. What do you want to roll? Insight? Uh, perception. Perception? Oh, God. <laughs> Not this time, buddy. <laughs> 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 I'm going to catch you. <laughs> I'm going to catch you with your sidekick. <laughs> I can't wait to bully you for that. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so Bowman's Our making heroes, his everyone. Way... <laughs> <laughs> Bowman's making his way over to uh, over to the arrow cave, the quiver even. Um, the arrow cave. Mortis, are you making any extra stops on your way, or are you heading over with Resonant to 
begin work on the mirror shards. I, I yeah, I'm just gonna hop over at the house, grab my mirror shard, and go back. Are you going to send Nick off to talk to Tracy tonight? I will. Yeah, I'll. I'll uh, as I'm at the house grabbing the shard and grabbing a snack, I will let Nick know what's going on and explain that we have an overdrive that isn't our overdrive and that we don't want to freak Tracy out. So we just need to be on a mission and that uh, Nick, if you could let Tracy know he's okay. He just, he just kind of vanished on everyone, um, I believe. So. Uh, yes, he will go forth and carry your lies for you. True love. True love. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you all pop back, you start working on the mirror shards. Resonant and Mortis, when you get back to the Nerian Nexus, you see that Sala is there, uh, sitting in the entrance room. He's cleared off a space on the table for all of you to put the mirror shards down in. There seems to be a ring of protective magic on a couple of different spots on the table. There's also a free-floating red cape that is sort of waiting patiently for you to return. I, I look over at Mortis quizzically. Can I give the cape a high five? Yeah, it lifts up its little lapel and high fives you. Right. Sala says, so yeah, the um, cape of flight came home while you guys were out. Oh. It was stolen from the museum and I guess it found its way back. So happy at time it's way home. Cool. Uh, I think it wants to go with one of you if any of you are interested in taking it with you. The cape sort of expands its form and like does like a superhero pose with its arms. Um Does the magic carpet come along? Almost, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's that mixed with Doctor Strange's cloak of levitation. Uh, what do you think? Well, one of the two of us can fly already. Yeah, both of us can. The only one that needs it would be Overdriver Bowman. <laughs> I'm not sure Fletch would do well flying around. The cape, like, stops its pose and it looks at you and it, like, gestures like it's drawing back a bow and arrow. Oh, no. And then it shrugs its shoulders. <laughs> I mean... Keep them. <laughs> I think I'm... he's already got a sidekick, though. <laughs> the cape, like, flies and flaps its wings when you call it a sidekick. <laughs> I, don't th I don't think it liked that word, Mortis. <laughs> How does he have a sidekick already? Did I miss he's something? Wishing. No. I mean, he's, he's got the cycle. I mean, he truly much treats it like a sidekick. Oh. Nice <laughs> cover. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I guess. Why not? Um, she'll turn to Sala. So, and she'll, she'll reach into her, the bag she brought with her. I've got the shard here. Um, best not to look at it and think about what you might want to change because I think it works pretty much right off the bat. Mm. And you got these things from here in the house? Yeah, mm. from a being we rescued from between the dimensions. We passed through a lot of doorways. Glimpse, right? Yeah. Well, we'll have to start studying these, but I have a feeling we're going to have to capture that creature again if we want more answers. He was captured? He got trapped in here. He wasn't captured, but he couldn't get out until, well, until one of you set him free. If he wasn't captured, maybe we could just try to get a message to him. Do we know what flavor of creature he is? Something very peculiar. Adrian has only seen one of his kind before. And not glimpse himself? 
knock one to himself. There was another one. That one was particularly nasty. But... Well, I mean... Good. Are there any any any? Is there any lore here in the Nexus about about him or any of this kind? Well, he's a chronozoid, which is a being from outside time who seeks to understand possibilities and branches in timelines. Um, they're sort of obsessed with traveling throughout the entire multiverse and seeing how things are going to how things are going to be changed and how things are going to change and trying to well trying to understand everything about the universe that they can some of them try to control that timeline they try to make subtle changes when they can but this one this glimpse he seemed relatively harmless he was upset that he was stuck in one mirror I think that's considered heinous to their kind have the ability to just walk into different timelines at will. It would be akin to being cooped up in your home for a year or more. Yeah, heaven forbid. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. Uh. Madness. Uh, so, maybe, yeah, maybe we can just get a message to him then. Maybe that, maybe that's where we start. We've got the shards here. If we can get in touch with Glimps, talk to him about it. Maybe find out what happens. We'll know what happened to Overdrive and Centuria. Yeah, um, I think that's probably our smartest move. Mortis, it's around this time you get a text on your phone. From Nick. Okay. Um, and when you open it up, uh, Nick has, um, he sent a message that says, Overdrive's here, question mark, question mark, question mark. Oh. Excuse me. What? <laughs> um. I'm sorry it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's over with Tracy and thinks that Overdrive's here. What? Do I know if Overdrive has an evil twin? <laughs> <laughs> Why is there one of two? Um, not as far as you know. As far as you know, Overdrive is, in, is a single child. Okay. I watch soaps. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Nick's like he doesn't have a goatee dot 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 I don't know unknown <laughs> I love my husband um, I'm in the bushes what do you want me to do <laughs> <laughs> wow uh, what's going on apparently my, my husband is currently stalking the overdrive's, uh, overdrive's house at our apartment, and Tracy is there with, with a Dave. Uh, according to my husband, the Dave that he's with does not have a goatee. Um, why, does, why does facial hair matter? <laughs> it's, like... it's a space check thing. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> Avoid the TM, I like that. Space Trek. <laughs> oh yes, my Thank favorite you. show is Space Journey. <laughs> um, yeah, so what's the deal? Do we, you know, I don't know. Want, want me to go find out? Yeah. That's not a bad idea. Just keep me in the loop. Sure. And, and I, I I mean I can deal with this. I don't know how to find the crossroads well. of time to figure <laughs> out how to find a uh, chrono feature thing. I mean yeah. Hey Sala. Yeah. <laughs> is the library working again? The library never stopped working. It did what it was supposed to do when you were there. It's not a feature, Sola. It's a bug. Um, yeah. <laughs> really. Really is. It keeps you there until you study. What did you need to study? I had to put it in for Adrian. 
He would get distracted anytime he had to work, and then I, he'd have to stay in there until he got his work done. Okay. I think, yeah, I think we'll be fine here. Um, with that, uh, Mortis turns and goes to walk down the hallway, and as he goes to start walking in the hallway, the whole dark, the whole heart hallway kind of darkens and becomes creepy and, and very horror movie-esque as Mortis steps out of here and into the crossroads and to travel across town to get to Overdrive House. Oh, spooky. Um, that's what that's what Speedy keeps calling him. Meanwhile, at Bowman's secret lair. Meanwhile, in the lair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Freedom. <laughs> Bowman, <laughs> Bowman, you you pull that's into boring. the place where you keep your salmon letter, and uh, yeah. Bowman's where the salmon letter. <laughs> You, just um, jumps off. Just jump off and do a few. <laughs> you uh, you park the distresses. you park the bow cycle and Jason's there waiting for you. Uh, he's sitting in the chair um, at the big computer that you use to monitor the city. And uh, he kind of turns around. He's got a hot pocket on his lap on a paper plate. Hot pocket. He says, "Oh, welcome back." Hope you didn't eat all my hot pockets. Shouldn't you be in bed? Are you my dad? Uh, I Don't was, answer I that would, question. <laughs> I wouldn't have brought you here. Wow. He says, I, these are my hot pockets. I got them myself. You you, you can count yours. I, I put my name on mine. If you do need who you are, welcome to anything you find in the fridge. Even though it's probably like mostly like health stuff, but it doesn't taste very good. For the hot pocket? <laughs> he has one vice. He allows himself one thing. He's like, it was either hot pockets or the protein shakes, and I didn't want a protein shake. Yeah, that's understandable. So, how was uh, wherever you were? I was in a lot of places doing a lot of things, and it has been an incredibly long day. Mm. Feels like it's been four or five weeks in one day. You ready for it to be longer? Oh, God. Yeah, I am now. And uh, he turns around and he starts clacking a few buttons on your keyboard, and he pulls up a couple of new programs that he's installed on the computer while you were gone. Checked in on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> At New Secret Lair! <laughs> Why did you install Tinder? <laughs> That's the last thing I need. You kidding? I'm catfishing people this moment. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> and Next uh, thing you know, he'll be the only OnlyFans site. This isn't good. He, oh pulls up a, uh, he pulls up a couple of security cameras throughout Freedom City, and you can see... Give me a perception check. Sure. Perception. Um, what did I roll? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend one of my hero points on that. Because I have them lying around. And I can do way better. There we go, that's way better. 28. 28. Well, the 28, as you're looking through the monitor, you see very, very quickly a black streak running through a couple of different buildings and you see alarms and fires erupting behind this streak. Can we slow the footage down? Look at the time. And uh, he says, as a matter of fact, I can. And he uh, starts going and he pauses it. He zoom and enhances, zoom and enhances, zoom and enhances. CSI music plays in the background. Enhance. <laughs> Enhance. 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 And, uh, he kind of takes the hot pocket and he points it at the monitor at the face of the um, of the black streak. He says, "Does that look like anybody's favorite ginger?" And it does. And you see Overdrive in a black suit. Oh, no. Well, wait, uh, look at the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How about that? I wonder what's coming next. 
<laughs> it says that's we weird, huh? <laughs> yeah, we got a problem. The bow cycle doesn't go that fast. And unless you want me to put a rocket a engine rocket. on it. <laughs> no, so, I have something else for you to work on. And I'll flick him the gem. And then I'm going to turn. And I'm going to go get myself a goddamn hot pocket. <laughs> He looks, at the... <laughs> he looks at the gem and he's like, what do you want me to do with this? I want you to learn how to use the electron microscope. <laughs> I've got For some examinations team. to do. It's like, I'm an urchin, not a, not a rocket surgeon. Oh. You are now. <laughs> and then... You're whatever this city needs you to be. <laughs> And then back you know over. Yeah, he will say that. Instead of me saying it jokingly, he will say the exact <laughs> same thing he said to Overdrive not too long ago. Mm. And he'll nod. Say, okay, you got it, boss. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll take the gem over to the microscope and swear under his breath. Crazy. Uh, meanwhile, back at Freedom Hall, what are uh, Sensory uh, and Overdrive doing? We can't, this is a family-friendly channel. I know, I was like, <laughs> we probably shouldn't talk about what's in The Jerry's sound dampeners are on, stay no more. <laughs> oh, Centurion Overdrive are doing Centurion Overdrive, okay. Yeah, see? <laughs> subtle, subtle. It's, 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 it's more subtle than Batman and Catwoman on top of the city. I make sure mm -hmm. the, I make sure the camera jammer thing is on. <laughs> Not giving Cynthia any side cash here. <laughs> Only fans, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Only since. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, let's just say that Centurion Overdrive are both going to be in a like really good mood. Mm. <laughs> well, for all, for all of five minutes until we tell them what's going on. <laughs> yeah, until you guys hey, ruin just it. let us bask in the glow, all right? <laughs> <laughs> well, afterwards, um, there's a knock at your door, Centurion. Oh god. Hey, can we do the next time to run us? Mm -hmm. Hey, um, so you can get dressed really fast, so maybe you answer it. <laughs> you didn't Wait, like peek door. out first though. <laughs> Make sure that no it's nobody evil. <laughs> nobody evil. <laughs> or Daedalus, because that would also be bad. Hey, he's not a real bad. <laughs> he would just judge you like one. Besides yep. I'm older now. He definitely can't tell me what to do. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> uh, yeah, so as they're doing that, Centuria will be, like, hurrying up and pulling on her <laughs> regular clothes. <laughs> so Overdrive's answering the door? Uh, yes. Overdrive is going to peek out the door to make sure that it's somebody that can see Overdrive in my room in this state. Hmm. Just open it and close it really fast. <laughs> what, you don't have a peephole? Do I have a peephole? You uh -huh. can have a peephole, that's fine with me. Okay, look at the peephole, who is it? Uh, Centuri or Overdrive, looking through the peephole, you see uh, your good friend, Ray Gardner Jr. Oh. Oh, sh Completely uh, corporeal in his own body, holding a chocolate filled hearts and flowers <gasps> uh centuria <Ooh>. it's bad <laughs> that's where we'll leave off for next week's episode son of a <laughs> i can't believe you've done this <laughs> for real <laughs> <laughs> oh no so, so the, the x showing up as a dc 50 uh yeah will save, we'll save. <laughs> How and who? Oh, thank God that Overdrive didn't open the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Too bad he didn't open the door. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Well, it's a cliffhanger. Who knows what's going to happen next week? Oh, boy. Well, next time on The Young and the Restless. <laughs> right. <laughs> right? Why is it always so dramatic when we have role playing section? <laughs> oh, man. Dad, come, GM. <laughs> well, thank you everybody for tuning in.
um, I appreciate you hanging in there with us, hanging in there tonight with us, um, for our wonderful weekly dose of superhero shenanigans. We have officially finished book number two of Nether War, and we're on episode 19, so that tells you how quickly we're getting through these six books. Um, as for other updates, we have our wonderful Blue Rose game, Tales of the Finest, tomorrow. We are using the Blue Rose Adventurer's Guide, so it's Blue Rose Through the Lens of 5th Edition D&D. &D. It's a whole lot of fun. I definitely recommend checking it out if you haven't checked it out yet. Jonesy is a wonderful uh, storyteller? GM? DM? Narrator? I think it's narrator in the age system. I don't know if it translates to DM in 5th Edition or not. Ooh, um, I think D&D trumps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to Jonesy, whatever he wants to be called. Um... And then Wednesday we have our Monster of the Week game. We're still chugging right along with that with the Order of the Penrose Triangle. Friday we have Something Something Dragons. We also have blog posts every Thursday on our website at untoldstoriesproject.com. I have one that's coming out this week. That is Five Things Your GM Wishes You Would Do. So definitely check that in if you want to please your GM, not even just me. Um... Although you guys don't have to worry about that, you guys. Please meet yeah. every week in a... After what you just did, I ain't doing nothing this week. <laughs> <laughs> Forget it. Um, yeah. Uh, I want to give everybody else a chance to say goodbye and plug anything else they want to plug, starting with Kevin. Well, uh, I, Alex already kind of stole my thumb a little bit. Like, there's there's great shows on here. Check it out. Um, Jones is a great storyteller. Lots of good things happening there. Um, yeah, just coming at you live. What, two nights a week right now? There's nothing, Wednesday is sort of... Three nights a week. We have uh, Monster of the Week on Wednesdays. Monster of the Week. Like, okay. Did I have a, like, aneurysm there, or did you forget to mention that? Like, no, I mentioned it. You had an aneurysm. Okay. I had an aneurysm. Okay. <laughs> it's a little time, time, time hiccup. I'm, I'm aging, yeah, that's it, time hiccup. I'm aging in dog years now, so, like, in the last seven <laughs> minutes, like, two years went by. Uh, no, so make sure you check those guys out. Uh, not sponsored. And I'm out before I put my foot in my mouth one more time. Over to you, Tracy. Uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, if you like what we do, uh, please do all the Twitter, Twitch, YouTube things. Like, share, subscribe, uh, all that cool stuff. It definitely helps uh, more people find our channel. And the more people find our channel, the easier it is for us to do more content. So, um yeah, I'll be back tomorrow night with a brand new episode of Tales of the Finest, our 5th edition of the Rose game, so I'm super excited about that. I have some amazing players who are up to all kinds of shenanigans all the time. Um, yeah, and with that, uh, I'll turn it over to Kat. Hey guys, thanks for turning in. I hope that you are loving all of our soap opera drama that we're bringing to the table. Um, I don't really have anything to plug, just come see... Jonesy run the game tomorrow for my homeboy, Brian, um, and some other cool peeps. And yeah, I guess that's all I have to say. Go ahead, Andy. Thank everyone for sticking with us tonight. We had a lot of fun bringing this episode to you. Um, come join us on our website. Come join us on our YouTube channel for playbacks for anything you might have missed. We put up a recap last week. so. You can kind of get caught up to where we were as of, well, before last week, at the very least. <laughs> <laughs> um, check out our StoryForge episodes that are out there. I've got a couple of different systems and character creation in those systems out there. So if you're at all interested in anything that's out there, just, you know, give us some feedback on that. I would, I would not mind ha uh, hearing from the community if you guys like that type of content. So... That's what I've got. You can, you'll find me here next week on Monday. We'll be back for more superhero shenanigans. Yeah. Calvin, we just had Iron Kingdoms come out this week, and it was very, very good. Yes. All right. So yeah, another great session. Uh, another cliffhanger that I'm really looking forward to resolving because that was a whole lot of stuff. But yeah, <laughs> um, I'm also going to be here every Monday. And again, like I said before, I'm on the Win with Dice channel every Wednesday. We upload a weekly GM podcast. And every like couple of weeks or so, we stream another episode of Lancer. So if you want to see some cool giant robot action, uh, you can head on over there. Last time we fought some giant sea monsters in the middle of the ocean. So uh, if you want to see us struggle against some giant whirlpools, uh, you could go check that out. 
because we fought several Krakens. Um, and also, I just wanted to say, you know, congrats to the whole USP team on the uh, the one year anniversary and everything. Um, just really cool. And like, this is a really awesome channel. And I hope y'all have more years to come. Welcome. And that's about it. So I'll pass it back to Alex. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody. As always, please join us next week, same bat time, same bat channel, as we figure out what's going on with this Council of Overdrives. <laughs> um, we're going to go ahead and raid the Crit Show. Looks like they're playing Masks tonight, so we'll keep the superhero theme going. Um, yeah. Everybody have a wonderful night, make good choices, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>